Really? And now I lost internet. All right, this is the joy of live. Sometimes parenting a special needs kid is like spectrum live. It sucks, all right? It drops, parenting drops. Sometimes it sucks. It's exhausting. It is something that so many other parents don't get. You feel like you really, you can't go to a meetup. You can't go to a mom's group. You can't go to a, the park day. Because what do you have to talk about? Well, my child decided not to kill himself today. Oh, my child decided that they could read one page and they're 11 years old and it was 24 point type and it was a kid's book or, um, you know, my child decided not to slice today or my child decided that they're gonna say a word today but they haven't said a word before. You know, when you are dealing with a child who has special needs, it can be really, really isolating and be really alone. Um, and you get really sick and tired of everybody else. Hey, we're gonna try this again. You get really, hello again. You get really sick and tired of people complaining about bullshit. Like, do you have any clue how bad it really could be in your little bubble of a world? It's like, really? Really? I think, you know, as, as special needs parents, often one of two things I've seen happen, and, and Maria, you can correct me if I'm wrong, either A, people are really appreciative of what happens in their life and their view of the world gets expanded and gets more open. And they see the positives more than they see the negatives. Or they become really bitter and all they see are the negatives and all they are is angry. Hey, Sarah, we're gonna try this again. <laughs> Got a love spectrum. Um, so th that's really what I've seen. I have seen people who look at the world and say, okay, yeah, I know shit happens, but I'm not gonna look at just the negative. I'm really, because there's so much negative in my life, I'm really gonna focus on the positive. You know, because there are pockets that are positive. And then there are those that get bitter and just see anything and everything as negative. And not realizing that that's actually a perspective choice. So we actually have the ability to choose how we take that situation. So when you are parenting a special needs child, whether it is a nonverbal autistic, whether they have a feeding tube, whether they have mental health challenges, whether they have learning disabilities, whatever the challenge is, the challenge is personal because it's a challenge for you. Right? So someone's gonna have an easier challenge and someone's gonna have a harder challenge. But that person standing in the challenge is challenged. Okay, so Maria says, I hate it when people need, tell me I need to spank and discipline my autistic children more. Yeah, like that does anything for any child. So we should beat them into submission. It worked for them, right? That's my favorite. Well, I came out just fine. Really? So you're telling me to hit someone else. The fact is that there are only two countries in all of the United Nations, two. There's 195 countries in, in the UN. There are two that have zero human rights for children. Somalia and the United States. Go figure that one. So Sarah says, I always admired people like that and couldn't do it until I realized I have to be a light for someone in a darker place than me. Your dad, yes, yes. Wow, who says that? Oh, lots of people say that, Sarah, lots of people. I have a friend who has a son who has Tourette's and they've been trying to get him to get his blood taken. And part of Tourette's is they have these verbal, verbal explosions and often with less than charitable words in public. And, um, you know, it, it is really frightening for her. People tell her that she should control her child better. How do you control someone? You don't. You don't. Mm. Oh, people, yeah, how do you, uh, being positive is a choice. And I think, you know, especially as women, we're often taught that complaining is conversation. Now, there is a difference, and I know, Sarah, you saw my post in Girl Talk the other day. There is a difference between compassionate sharing where you are looking for support and you are looking for camaraderie and you're looking for insight. That's one thing. But then there's the person that does nothing but bitch all the time. That's complaining. And when someone isn't actually looking, hey honey, when someone isn't actually looking for that camaraderie ship, but looking to put another down. And that happens a lot in the special needs world. So, you know, when as the parent, you know, you are isolated because your child can't be without you. Sometimes I literally cannot leave the house because Sarah's anxiety is so high. 
or Liz's is so high. I mean, there have been times that Rich and I have gone to the grocery store and we don't even know if we're gonna come home to a live child. That's scary as shit. All right, so Sarah says, I am dark, jaded, and self-effacing, which could become complaining if I'm not careful. Well, Sarah, honestly, that's a choice. You can choose to be the light or you can choose to be the darkness. That's totally up to you. And sometimes you can choose to be both, believe it or not, in the same time and be kind of gray, all right? We are what we tell ourselves. So if you tell yourself, and right here, you put it right in writing, I am dark, I am jading, I am self-effacing, you have now identified what you want to be. What you say becomes your reality. It becomes your mantra, I am dark. Are you really? I see, I see your paintings. They are light. They are beautiful. They are not foreboding. They are not jaded. A part of you is dark and jaded and self-effacing but not all of you. You get to decide which one you want to feed. You do, you have the power. And I think as parents of special needs children, we often forget that we have that power. We have that power to look inside ourselves and say, what do we want to be for our child? What do we want to model? Because we are isolated, because we are alone, because we are frightened, because we are overwhelmed. Yes, you need support. Yes, you need family members that get it. Yes, you need friends that get it. You know, it's super important. I have a friend who has bipolar and we go on and off for talking. And it's not because I'm angry at her. It's because she's not able to handle relationship at that moment. Or I just can't handle talking with her at that moment because I'm not where she is and I can't be supportive. Being a parent to a special needs child means remembering to parent yourself. Remembering to hold space for yourself and for your child. It means really trying hard not to judge the parents that are complaining about bullshit. Guilty here, because to them that is their challenge. You know, their, their child that won't eat the peas on the, on the plate, or the child that got a B instead of an A, or the child who's behind a little bit, like maybe they haven't mastered fractions yet, I haven't either, I'm 46, life went on. Um, to them that's their challenge, but is that really a special needs challenge? sometimes wonder maybe it is like they're the special needs um, so how can we really support one another finding groups on Facebook I find is great there are times that Facebook has been my only adult conversation and outlet for years on end and being honest and being open and being truthful and not being like oh everything is great and fuzzy and beautiful you know what sometimes when someone asks how's it going depending on who it is you can really say it sucks because until we start getting honest with ourselves and with our words we can't even begin to find the support that we need as a special needs parent so yes there are groups there are autism groups there are um, a, groups when it comes to being able to find help for learning disabilities there are groups for probably anything and everything on meetup but the truth of the matter is when your child is in the middle of a flare you're by yourself and that's scary and it's isolating and you need to find a place where you can come and be safe and that is my hope here so that you guys you know we can have this this tribe of women basically Ooh, we can have a coven because coven's a power I love that let's have a circle coven of women who have this power to support one another not like a witchy coven I mean if you want to that's cool too but um, the the base word for um, Oh, what is it? I just had it in my head it just came and it went for um, Coventry is Coven all right for connection all of that so my goal here is to have other moms who have challenges whether it's their needs or their child's needs and to create a community for women where we can support one another on those days when things are going really bad we have them when our kids needs are more than we can give them when our needs are bigger than what we can fulfill within ourselves. Connect with another woman. Hop on here and say, hey, I need some help. I'm hitting the wall. I feel like everything is crumbling in around me. And don't make it vague. Don't make it like, I've had a bad day. Okay, yeah, I had 90 minutes of sleep yesterday. I had a crappy day too, but it was still a beautiful day. There were still positive things. Be specific. Be specific in what you need. Be specific who you need it from and be specific why you need it when we start thinking in specifics especially when our child has special needs we can then identify what it is that we really need when it's this big vague thing we're not gonna be able to pin pin it down 
and say, oh, I, I obtained that. I mean, if you say like, I need more money, okay? You found a dollar on the sidewalk, you have more money. How much more do you really need, okay? Specific, specific, specific. When you're parenting special needs children, you need specific about the type of person that you want to reach out to and have support from. Because if you just say, I need support, well, you may find someone who's extremely codependent and wants to suck the life out of you. Or you may need someone who says, hey, I'm gonna be a venting ear for you, but then I'm gonna hold your hand and help you through it and help you get to that other side. And there's a big difference between that codependent person that wants to own it for you and someone that wants to hold your hand and help you through it. And as a special needs parent, you, you need the second, not the first. Because most of the times our, child, our children are codependent and we have to be able to teach them how to become dependent but not codependent, which is a whole other talk for a whole other, a whole other day. So, as a special needs parent, here, here are the similarities. We're often isolated, we're frightened, we're overwhelmed, and we're exhausted, right? Here's things you can do. Spend time for yourself. Hold on, I have spectrum. Spend time for yourself. Invest in yourself. Find pockets of time and identify what you need specifically and what you, in, what you say is going to become your mantra and your reality. Watch what you say to yourself, about yourself, to your children, about your children, because that becomes their reality and your reality. If you wanna change it, change what you say. I have guys here marking my yard. I have to go or else you can see this guy named Anthony in a bright orange shirt any second now. So I will see you guys tomorrow. Take care. As always, like, share, ask questions, heart, thumbs up, thumbs down, let me know. Bye-bye.